Okay, my turn to make the gata. <laughs> Close it. This is awesome. Turn to the ball. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I hope you're all doing great. This is David Hoffman from David's Been Here in beautiful Dilijan, Armenia. Guys, I am in awe right now. I just woke up. I'm staying here at the Daravand Guest House. This place is awesome. We are in the middle of a national park. And as you can see, it's really, really green out here. Lots of beautiful mountains. And yeah, today what we're doing is we're gonna have a simple breakfast right here at the guest house. And then after this, we're gonna go explore the national park. We're gonna see some wildlife, hopefully see some deer. Then we're gonna see a monster and we're gonna finish it off at a restaurant that does like traditional old school cooking methods so they make food like the old school way here in Armenia I'm super excited look we got this, this dog right here hey buddy you good beautiful this guest house I slept like a baby last night the food is delicious I'm about to have an Armenian coffee which is like really really thick morning Good morning how are you amazing Armenian coffee oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> Super strong guys. Woo. It's just very thick. Oh now it's better. Before it was like too much. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> we got lavash with lavash. So we got lavash which is the bread. We have some eggs, some cheese, some honey. Very simple breakfast. Oh I can't wait, let's eat. Gonna make myself like an egg sandwich guys, look. So we got the lavash. Throw the egg on top, right? Mm -hmm. Crumble the cheese a little bit, like all over it. And after that, you just roll it up, right? Maybe it's too much. Maybe I put, is the whole lava just good? Yeah, right here. Okay, so you dip? Yeah. Wow. This is an Armenian egg sandwich. This is something about the lava. The lava is so tasty. Love the cheese, sour cream. Wow, it's different. This is not like, this is like straight organic sour cream. Simple, filling, and delicious. More lavash. Oh, thanks, my friend. So you don't eat bread with coffee? No. So how's breakfast? With breakfast. If if we prefer to have breakfast, it should be eggs. Like you have, you see it now. It's like typical, simple Armenian breakfast. So basically, this is how it works. Super strong coffee and nice egg sandwich, Armenian style. Mmm. Coffee strong. Was good. I actually love this type of breakfast. Very simple, but filling with some sour cream. So the Armenian coffee is very thick, right? So when you finish it, the very bottom is like, mm, it's like very, very thick. And you flip it over and she's gonna read my fortune now. You're gonna have some crazy day today. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Amazing well, day. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. So there's nine rooms here, right? Nine rooms and a cottage. Yeah. Okay. okay. Just so you guys know, when you come to the John, you're staying here. <laughs> All right, let's go. Cold morning. We're going to National Park Dilijan to see some deals. Dilijan is a cozy corner in northwest of Armenia, and many call it Little Switzerland. The forested and reclusive town is home to many Armenian famous artists, composers, filmmakers and it features also some traditional Armenian architecture. You can come here to relax, to do hiking, mountain biking and just having fresh air early in the morning. You can go for a walk. So you're gonna love the Lijan. I'm excited, I'm really excited. Look at this, look at this beautiful scenery. Wow, we literally keep running into cows here. We just turned a right and went up the mountain and it's like non-stop cows. We actually saw a puppy and we saw like, what is this, like another 25 cows. Wow, we got some calves, some big cows. Be really careful going up here because they just like literally just jump, like choop choop. <laughs> they go, they grease, and in the evening they go home. They go back home. They go grease and being back. No, but there was one guy there, I guess like. You saw him? Yeah, saw he, with him? the stick, okay. with the stick. Yeah. And here are the red deers, wow. <laughs> pleasure, pleasure, David, pleasure. Before we see the deer, we're gonna stop and have a little bit of coffee. These uh, these gentlemen invited us to some delicious Armenian coffee. Woo! Hot. Mm. 
It's not that bad actually. This is pretty good. Like this, mm -hmm. with the cold weather, beautiful scenery. Oh. If I was a smoker, I'd have a big cigarette in my mouth right now. Do you want? <laughs> No. Do, you, do you want me to read your uh, fortune? No, no, don't read my fortune to me. <laughs> she read my fortune earlier. <laughs> when you come to the Red Deer Breeding Center, what you could do here is basically feed the deers from outside this massive cage. We got exclusive access today to enter the cage. We're gonna keep a distance from the deer though. And why, why is there a second cage within this? Actually, there's a second cage because this is a breeding period and they separated the stronger male from the other ones, from the younger ones, not to let him to be more aggressive. Right here, he's going up and down the cage, basically like intimidating the other three males. So you have small males inside, you have this big guy and you can tell his antlers, his antlers are huge and you have a few smaller ones around here. So as you see, we have this one dominant male. He's the only one outside of that smaller cage. So it's him and all these female. And then what happens here is that in the breeding center, the goal is to breed them and then re-release them into the wild. And you know, we are in the national park, so they literally just release them right here, right? I mean, that's yeah, it. Yeah, there is from here. Okay, great. I mean, let's go feed them. Can we let's do that? Go. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Look how close they are. They literally just came up to us because we have the food. They all came up to us. Okay, oh my God. Nice. Oh my gosh, it's like ripping it apart. So this is what you have to do when you come here. You have to feed the deer. What happened? <laughs> he doesn't want anymore? <laughs> hey, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you <laughs> for being awesome, dude. <laughs> so where are we going next? We are going to Havardzin Monastery, another hidden treasure in Dilijan Forest. Old school monastery, like a thousand years or something? Yes. Okay, I can't <laughs> wait. This monastery is a little different from the other monasteries we've visited. This one's actually hidden within the forest. So it's a hidden monastery. To get here, it takes only like 15 minutes from Dilijan. As you can see, beautiful road leading up to the monastery. You really feel like this is like, you know, in the middle of nowhere, super secluded. Hagarzin Monastery, uh, together with the other monasteries around Dilijan, it was uh, one of the educational and spiritual centers of this area, and it uh, represents a very, um, you know, iconic architectural style of medieval period. So we made it here to the monastery. As you can see, it's right over here. And we're actually gonna be doing a master class right now. A master class in Gatia Mini. Basically, master classes here is when they teach us how to make a certain dish. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. 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 Bit. This a bit? This a bit. This a bit. Sanna. So Sanna. Uh -huh. This is my hat now. <laughs> <laughs> These two ladies, they're gonna show us how to make the gata. 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 How no. are it in gata? It from it's a simple uh, sweet filling. Uh -huh. This is uh, blueberry, uh -huh. and this is apricot and thyme. thyme. And uh, yeah. with the blueberry, there is also lemon. Lemon, lemon. lemon uh -huh. as well. Yes. So the way this is gonna work is they're gonna make one of each of these, right? So they're gonna make one of each. Then I'm gonna make one. I don't know which one I'm gonna make. Actually, I might make the blueberry one. That's the one I like the most. I mean, I just love blueberry. I'm all about it. Okay, my turn to make the gata. <laughs> okay, so the way it works is I have to get 100, 100 grams. 100 grams. So I'm gonna make a ball of 100 grams. Uh -huh. So let's see, hopefully, make like a meatball, right? Similar. All right. A little more. Okay. Like that. Let's try that. Right. Bigger? Like that. So I'll put this in the middle. And then. Literally go like that, and then how do you close it? So you put it in like this, right? Like that? Is that good? Close it? This is awesome. Turn it to the ball. <laughs> so then roll it. Put it on. Perfect. And then what, what happens now? Alright. Follow me, guys. 
That's how they take those drinks. Not sure you have to put the egg on the top of the cut. Oh, egg, okay. In your face, you're nice. Oh, this is how you decorate it, basically. This is how, this is how you make some. Okay, so I'm gonna. I'm drawing a face. <laughs> okay, so then I just put it in there. All the way? No? What am I doing? <laughs> All right, guys. So after 10 minutes of cooking the gata, it is ready. And I gotta say, the experience here is really amazing. Everybody's super friendly. The two ladies here, they're like my my Armenian grandmothers for real. <laughs> and uh, and here we go, the gata. So they cut like a pizza, right? Like triangles. And then we have right here like a blueberry jam. Whoa, this is, looks good. And then we also have two teas, and it's called the roast sheep. You said the roast sheep, right? It's the roast sheep. I've never really seen this. It's a, it's a fruit from here. And they made some tea out of it, so I'm gonna try the tea. Mmm, minty. So they put mint, roast sheep. Oh, very nice, very light. And here we go. Mmm. Mm, so good. Mmm, nice and sweet. I love the blueberries. I'm saying the blueberries are a little different. It's not like blueberries that we know. It's a, it's, a, it's a little different. It comes from this area in Armenia. Soft dough in the middle. Also, it's a little crunchy. Inside, you have the blueberry. Open it up, you can see that blueberry. Oh, wow. I love the jam, though. Adding the jam, it's a must. I won't lie, it's a little addictive <laughs> because it's so sweet. And the biggest difference here is that this is actually very small compared to the other ones I've tried. They're usually like really, really big, like that. It's like the sweetest bread I've had in my life. Wow. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you. Hey, thanks my friend. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you so you much. Hey man, thank you, thank you. Have a good one. All right, let's go explore the monastery. By the way, this monastery was reconstructed by Dr. Sheikh Sultan from United Arab Emirates. He was here, he admired the site and decided to support all the reconstruction of this complex. Now we go to refectory. This is one of the best survived refectories from 13th century in Armenia. This is very old photo. Wow, so he saw like like really old, run down. Yeah. And he decided to, you know, bring his money and fix it up. Wow. He supported all the reconstruction. Wow, what a difference. What a difference. Refectory is dining hall for the monks who lived in this monastery. And it is built and includes 12 columns around that symbolize 12 apostles of Jesus Christ. Look at this. From inside, it's totally original 13th century construction. This is incredible. Beautiful spot. And I love, I love the tables, by the way. This is like traditional Armenian craftsmanship, right? Yeah. Wow. And who sits in the, in the middle? Like the head monk? Katolikos can sit in here whenever they have special celebrations. So this is the seat for the patriarch. We are about to enter the oldest church in this complex. This complex uh, consists of four churches, refectory, prayer halls, hajkars, and now, right now, we're standing at the oldest church of this complex. This is Saint Gregory the Illuminator Church, 10th century. The uh, narthex, this is first hall, and then we are entering the church. We separate narthex from the church. Okay. So this is the entrance to the church. Oh, the wow. church is cross-shaped dome church, like typical for Armenian uh, architecture. And actually, Hagardin is one of those examples of uh, iconic examples of Armenian architecture in Middle Ages. Wow, this church is tiny, guys. Tiny church. There's two benches here, the altar, and that's it. Really old, 10th century. What else we got here? Wow, look at these walls. These stones, huge stones. The light coming in, I mean, this is like real, like medieval. You could really feel it. Really dark, 
Only thing you got is the candle and the light. This is the ruins of a church here. The ruins of the entrance of the church. Huge pillars. Oh. Secret storage. They used to hide the treasures of the monastery. Right in there. This area we opened during the reconstruction. And this is the church, guys. Another beautiful church, 10th century. By the way, David, this is even 11th century. We have inscription on the wall. So it's the 11th century church. There's four churches here, correct? Yes. And there's also something really special. You're telling me it's an ancient walnut tree that they planted here during the same time period, so a thousand. Tradition, yes, tradition says that they planted the walnut tree when they started the construction of the monastery. So it is as old as monastery. Many churches in Armenia, they have walnut trees next to them because walnut has ability to take lightning on it. As many churches had wooden roofs, so next to the churches they planted walnut trees to protect the church from the lightning. So and imagine several years ago, this walnut tree finally had its mission to take the lightning on it, so it's half of it just burned down. When was that? When? It was a few years ago. Yeah? Whoa, so it got struck by lightning? A thousand years after it was planted? Yeah. That's crazy. And that's it guys, we saw two of the churches here at the monastery, there's four. They're all a little different, you know? Some of them date back to the 11th century, 12th century, 13th century. Right. You have to see the walnut tree and now you know why it's so significant. Over a thousand years old, it was planted during the construction of the monastery. Now let's go to lunch. Where are we going? We are going back to Dilijan town and we are going to try some local traditional cuisine. So you're gonna love it. Yeah? Yes. All right, guys, after like a 10 minute drive, we're back in the town and we're going to eat at a restaurant here. I think it's called Tava. We're going to restaurant Tava. Tava and Lush. Wait, they are in the same building. They are all really good ones. You will see the first floor, but I guess it's better when we go upstairs. So you will love the atmosphere here. You will love people in here. And you're gonna love the food. Wow, this is nice. This is different. I like this place. Very funky. Love the colors. Beautiful. This is so cool. It's more like a feels like more like vintage, modern. Oh guys. Wow. Beautiful spot. Really nice. Oh man. And they got a lot of wine. I see a lot of wine. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh, what is this? Like cheese boards? Cut cheese. You got meats, you got bread. This is appetizer set. Some local cheeses they did with their own spices. You see Bastarma right in there. See different kind of meat, snacks. Yeah, this is this is Losh. This one is our break. Wow. Already it's coming cold foods, breads, everything is coming right here. That's a really, really big brick oven. Yes. That's huge. Yes. Wow, the aroma here, the smell, it just like hits you how delicious it's everything nature, is. Nature, nature. Oh my God, I can't wait. So it's two restaurants. Downstairs you got Losh, upstairs you have Tava. Tava is more like a vintage restaurant. Yes. Downstairs, uh, so Losh and Tava have different menus, <coughs> different vibes. And the food is awesome. Like, the yeah, food looks incredible. Yeah. Wow, I can't wait to eat all this food. <laughs> <laughs> Come, all right, let's go, let's go. This is no joke, guys. This is no joke. Look at this feast. We have so many different things. We have right here the bruschetta. We have the cheese bread board in the middle. Then we have, I think this is couscous with mushrooms. Over here we have chicken with, uh, what is that? So tomatoes, onions, peppers. You have some two different sauces. One of them is spicy, yes. Over here we have Armenian noodles. Yes. You told me, Armenian or, and pork belly? And yeah. What? So guys, I'm gonna start off with the bruschetta. Let's just try one of these. I know they all look so beautiful. It's like a delicate, delicate little plate here. Uh. This one has some meat on top, this, uh, this piece. Mmm. Mmm. It's like a fruity jam. It's bastuma with the raspberry jam. The saltiness with the sweet and the bread. Phenomenal. Right, we got some cheese. Delicious cheese. Wow, this cheese looks good. I think there's peppers in it, right? Red pepper. Red pepper. Oh, is the bread here in Armenia is king. No, it's, it's almost like a manchego. I'm gonna get some of this couscous. 
Ooh, right there. Couscous. Get some mushrooms. This is tree mushrooms. This is tree mushrooms. They grow on trees. It's okay. very local Dilijani. Couscous. Mmm. Oh wow. It's like smaller grains. Whoa. A little fruity. No, that's some fruit. The other one's sweet. Right here. We're trying the mushrooms. It's amazing. It's actually a tree mushroom. It grows on trees. Oh my god. So now we're gonna get some of the pork, and I'm also gonna get some of the noodles. You know, this is so different. You know, it's Armenian noodles, a little bit of a twist on it, right? And then we're also gonna get some chicken. I think under the chicken, there's some beans. We're gonna get a tomato, and this sauce. This sauce is like a spicy sauce. He said it's a little, it's a little hot. Be careful. And they always give us, you know, some lettuce. And this is like to make yourself a sandwich. If you wanna make yourself a little pork belly, almost like Korea, you know? Get some of the sauce, put it inside. It's so good. Plus, it's not that spicy. Love the crunch, making a little lettuce wrap. Oh, delicious. Wow, that's an amazing pork. Right here we have chicken. Try chicken with some of that sauce too. Oh, give me spicy all day. Mm. And then here we have the Armenian noodles. Whoa. Hey, that's so different. That's like... It almost feels like noodles in China, but these are a little, I think it's like a little more oily, you know? No sauce, just good oil. Delicious. Wow. That is so good. Mm. The food is like comfort food. You know? Really make you feel at home. All the best ingredients, super fresh, all organic, and basically, my favorite, I don't know, the noodles. But you know what, I haven't even tried the beans yet, so let me see that. I love beans. Mmm. Mmm. Nice and mushy. Big. That's good. This is like real good food. Wow. So right here, they have like four different cheeses. The string cheese, this is like the typical one, it's very salty. And this one is almost like a, almost like a Parmesan, but a little creamier. Softer and so good. This meal has been epic. So good, so organic. Everything is so delicious. My favorite two things though, I have to say is the mushrooms. They're just so good and earthy and delicious. Also the, the beans, really good as well. I mean, everything is amazing, but I think those two are my favorite things. I just, I'm just gonna keep going, I'm just gonna keep eating them. Yeah, so it's not just what we did today, which was epic. I mean, we started off with breakfast at the, at the bed and breakfast, right? Then we went to see the deers, so the red deer. Amazing, beautiful animal, we fed them. After that, I went to the monastery, explore the monastery, another really historical monastery you have to visit. I mean, this is what Armenia is about. You know, lots of history here, over 2,000 years of, you know, almost Christianity here. And yeah, I mean, Dilijan is amazing. It's, a, it's a definitely a gem. Most people don't know about it, so I recommend you come here when you go to Armenia. If you love this video, thumbs up, comment below, subscribe to my channel, and we'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Armenia. Bye-bye.